Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I am lucky to have with me today my good friend, Adina Sullivan Marlowe, um, who is a coordinator of teacher effectiveness in the San Diego County Office of Education in California. Uh, and Adina and I have known each other a long time, and I found mm -hmm. it sweet of her to uh, chat with me for a few minutes. So, Adina, you're in a relatively new role. Um, tell us a little bit about what you and your team, and maybe more generally what the county office has been doing to keep learning and teaching going, support families, students, uh, educators in the region, whatever you want to share. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks so much for asking me to be a part of this. Um, yeah, I joined the San Diego County Office of Education in January, so I've got a few weeks to get to know my team before all of this happened. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, uh, not speaking for the county office, but rather just for my, my team, I can share a little bit about uh, what the county office have done. So the San Diego County Office of Education um, supports or provides services for 42 districts, 780 schools, over, uh, over a half million students, 124 charters, our uh, juvenile court and community schools, and five community college districts. You know, whatever, no big deal. Um, yeah, a little, little bit here and there. <laughs> And um, uh, the county office has been working really, really closely with local and state health departments and the California Department of Ed because it's, it's, there's a huge area that we're um, uh, representing and supporting. And the county office has been um, providing uh, resources for districts, um, pandemic response templates, um, you know, cleaning resource, uh, cleaning guidance, uh, parent resources, um, uh, San Diego County Schools have um, prepped or distributed, delivered over a million student meals. Um, like other schools, um, that's really our first priority is making sure our families are okay, uh, making sure they have the food they need and have the information they need, um, and then providing um, guidance on finding ch uh, child care, um, instructional support for all learners and English learners in particular, um, our innovation provided um, distance learning webinars uh, for educators. Um, and then uh, one of the big things more recently is providing guidance. Um, Dr. Par Paul Gothold, who's our superintendent, has been uh, working really hard with a team of folks to provide guidance for our districts on um, looking at reopening with modifications, versus, uh, opening normally, uh, mental health needs, uh, graduation promotion ceremonies, um, which is just such a, that's a hard one right now um, for so many folks. Um, parents safety folks, curriculum experts, and more coming together to build materials that are going to support the recommendations that are being put forth. Um, and then, you know, reminding folks we still have a responsibility um, and we need to be really vigilant around, you know, child abuse is still, an, and neglect is an issue we need to pay attention to um, with our kids at home. Um, our, our television, we have a television studio in our county office providing educational programming. So providing a whole variety of uh, services and information for our districts and families throughout the county. Oh, yeah. um, my team is uh, effectiveness in preparation and um, we support not just San Diego County but actually ac teachers across the state of California, educators and actually folks that are even outside of California as well. Okay. And we've been really lucky that most of our work has been able, actually all of our work has been able to continue um, pretty much the same just from home. So add some um, pets, dogs, cats, and children coming in at various times and uh, we're uh, making it work. Start every day with an 8 a.m. Um, getting everybody online and then, um, and then you know, moving and, and doing our work. Um, and we've been really focusing on continuing the work that we do uh, with supporting educators and our various programs, and then looking forward to how we're going to support educators moving forward. Uh, we run a variety of programs um, supporting um, teacher candidates um, with programs like CSET, so it's the California subject um, exams for teachers uh, with the prep programs for that. Um, with teacher induction, so once they become teachers, uh, supporting them through that, um, added authorizations for our special education uh, teachers, uh, 
educator effectiveness and evaluation. So working with um, schools and districts for how they're evaluating their right now, it's an interesting time because you know there are teachers that are in an are in an, an evaluation process so what happens to that and how do schools work with that how do districts work with that um, teacher recruitment um, you know there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen um, there are teachers teacher candidates who were in the middle of their prep programs mm -hmm. and did they get a chance to do all of their hours what happens can they do that another way working with the state um, and what that looks like and then how, do, how are districts going to be able to hire folks? Um, right. You know, are there gonna be hirings or are there gonna be, you know, uh, adjustments in staff in some way? So uh, we normally run a, a, a job fair that was scheduled for May, which of course is not gonna happen face-to-face -face right. now. So we've transitioned that's gonna be a virtual one on June 2nd. Um, providing webinars for teacher candidates and new teachers. Um, what is the current status? There's a lot of questions out there. What happens? Um, will I be able to get a job if my teacher prep program um, has had to make adjustments? Um, how is that going to work? Can um, districts hire me? What does that look like? Um, there's a, it's called a variable term waiver in the state of California is going to be using. Um, how is that working and how are districts going to be able to utilize that? Um, how do I interview? How do I do a resume? How does a virtual webinar or a, a virtual job fair work? So really working with teachers kind of throughout the process and looking forward to not just how are we supporting them now with these really unusual circumstances, but what does it look like for supporting them um, through the next school year and with again, continuing on these kind of extenuating circumstances, um, it's just, it's normal isn't gonna be normal for, right. for quite some time. So we're just really trying to ad address that. Um, and also kind of taking a proactive look at the courses that we do have, because almost all of our work again is online for our programs, but proactively looking at our content um, and accessibility. And that's something that's, that's been an issue for, for always um, but really coming to the forefront now and how do we make sure that we're supporting our teachers um, and other educators in our programs and meeting all of their needs regardless of um, you know if they're coming to us with a visual impairment or um, maybe deaf and hard of hearing or making sure that our programs are meeting those needs um, and talking to other folks about how, how are you meeting those needs for your kids as well. Right. So, Adina, what suggestions do you have for administrators who are trying to ensure that there's some basic sufficiency of instruction for students in a remote learning environment? What do sort of instructional coaching or maybe even formal observation and evaluation look like? Like, what suggestions do you have for people right now? Um, I think definitely keeping in mind what your, um, what your policies are, both as a, as a, as a school, as a district, and what are your state policies? Um, and making sure that we're not forgetting those and keeping in touch because there's um, the state discussion, I can speak for California, are there's there's a lot of them um, and they're, they're, they're happening and kind of keeping um, touch with that and keeping a communication. Um, don't leave folks hanging, let them know you are thinking about it, you are looking at it, you are um, trying to work out best scenarios are and you know um, you know is it a home is it a hold harmless like we're doing for students um, but also you don't want to you don't want aren't good continuing on how are you going to continue coaching them and really using um, using your county office using your um, research to help you in that process yeah, it's, you know, it's a real challenge, of course, because many of those traditional markers that we might look for in a coaching stance or a, an evaluative stance just aren't there anymore. And we have these sort of messages from the state or county or district level saying, it's okay to ease up on instruction. First and foremost, let's just take care of our kids, right? And so there's a sort of intention with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And keep it, what is important, right? And what is important right now? And, and, and keeping that focus there and keep, you know, I, I talked um, track of what your policies or procedures are, but with that, within that, 
what is really the intention of that? And, and what, what are the most important things right now? Right. And that may or may not be on your rubric. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, or is there, a value, is there an adjustment of the, of the rubric, thinking about the rubric and what that rubric actually means and the intention behind it? Absolutely. So, Adina, what seems to be working well right now? Communication. Um, keep open communication, keeping everyone in the loop. Folks are going to have questions and have questions. Um, they may have asked that question last week, but that's still on their mind kind of in this stress mode right now in one way or another. So being patient with one another and keeping lines of communication. As you hear an update, share that update. Um, that's sharing rumors, right? But if there's, there's new information that's coming down the line, here's what we know now, always keeping in mind that it may change, but here's what we know at this point. And just keeping everyone always in the loop. That's, that's I think, really been the biggest thing for us as a county. Um, and for um, my department in particular. And, and that's probably both internal as well as external. So like you've got a lot, of, a lot of moving parts, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So opportunities or challenges as you look forward? Um, more opportunities mm -hmm. than anything. Um, you know, challenges have always been there and they're going to be there. Um, they might look a little bit different now, but those challenges always exist. Um, but I think the opportunities are really there for um, taking a look at how how does school work um, and how does support work for teachers. And that's really where my team comes in. How do we support um, teachers and what are those opportunities to help folks become better educators really focus we're really you know focusing on quality instruction so what does that look like and what does that look like in a new environment um, I think there's definitely opportunities for us and for all of us as educators to kind of take a new look at that what does that look like and how can we really meet need and kind of bring each other up awesome uh, we're near the end of our time together is there anything else you want to share no, I, I just would say to everybody, it is, it's, we're going to get through this. And as educators, we have this amazing um, place in city and this amazing opportunity to really help one another as educators and students really move forward um, with thoughtfulness and intention um, with the way we, we work together and the way we learn and what does that look like and and kind of spend this time you know as we're all also working uh, and doing a million things but also spend some time thinking about what is our intention and what does it look like and how can we um, make it better for all of us yeah and i think that's going to be so important for all of us right is that we're so busy in the work right now but just like we tell our students we got to carve out those metacognitive spaces where we're reflecting on the work and reflecting absolutely thinking about the work um, because um, things are going to be different in the fall whether we want them to or not uh, right. and we have a few months here to sort of gear up at least in the U.S. Um, because of our school schedules. So uh, everybody that's Adina Sullivan Marlowe. She has been sharing uh, what's happening in but not speaking for <laughs> the entire San Diego County Office of Education. Uh, which is doing quite a great deal of fantastic work. Uh, Adina, thanks for being with me today. Thanks so much, Scott.